Good morning, Lions. Welcome to the third day of our sessions. Special welcome to our featured speaker this morning, PID Lion AP Singh, and our international vice president, Lion Douglas Alexander, who is here with us. I'm Nicolin Carol Moore, and I'm your presenter, your moderator this morning. Um, so far, we've had in our media conference, we've had two days of sessions. Uh, the first day we focused, we had a panel of four persons who spoke on the issue, varying aspects of membership. And yesterday we had, first of all, a very important issue, virtual fundraising and really engaging presentations there were. And this was followed by Professor Michael Taylor who spoke on the issue of climate change. The theme of this media conference is a new path of innovation in action and our membership engagement in service and service delivery. In keeping with this theme, we begin today's sessions with a presentation that focuses on the relationship between service and leadership. We have this morning a lion who is known globally and who has earned a reputation as an effective and challenging speaker. Arvinda Pal Singh, fondly known as AP Singh, is from India and has been a lion since 1984. He was elected district governor in 2000 and council chairman in 2001. He was elected as an international director for the years 2004 to 2006 and he has been nominated as an international board appointee on no less than three occasions. He has also served on the board of LCIF and as a multinational coordinator for raising funds. PID AP served as chairman of the D district governor elect seminar at Chicago convention in 2007 and as a group leader and special presenter thereafter. He has been actively involved in initiatives in various capacities to promote sustainable membership growth in LCI across the world. Currently, AP also serves as the chairman of National Site First Committee of India. He's a leadership trainer and a motivational speaker and has made presentations at several Lions conventions as well as at area forums in all eight constitutional areas of the world. He has also been a faculty member on 40 Lions Leadership Institutes in India, South Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Lion AP has been credited with 22 Lions International President's Medals, as well as the highest award, which is the Ambassador of Goodwill. He's a multi-level Progressive Melvin Jones Fellow and a major gift donor for Campaign Site First 2, as well as Campaign 100. He has attended 20 international conventions and has made presentations at several of these. AP is a practicing chartered accountant and his family business interests, sorry, his family business interests include automobile dealerships for several leading brands of commercial vehicles, tractors, and farm equipment. Lions and Leos, this short bio gives only a glimpse of the caliber of our speaker and we are delighted that he has agreed to deliver this presentation today. PID, Lion AP Singh. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, PID Nicolin. I'm humbled by the words that you have used and uh, it's uh, kind of an accepted norm across the world of lions that we use good words for all our friends. We make them feel happy, we make them feel more comfortable. Thank you very much for all the words that you used. Extremely generous of you. And before I start, I'm also very grateful to the council chair, Denise, for this opportunity to speak to my friends from MD60. And of course, to our vice president, uh, who I was not very sure whether he would be joining this session, but then he is here. So vice president, thank you very much. Your presence here itself would be a matter of tremendous inspiration for me. Friends, I've been asked to talk about uh, the relationship between service and leadership. And when I speak about a particular subject, which is so close to my heart, 
as close as the relationship between service and leadership, I'm going to be narrating a couple of instances or a small anecdotes, stories that really relate to me. When I became an international director, and usually in our part of the world, the international directors usually, uh, you know, get a particular line spin manufactured with some kind of a message. And the pin that I had used as an international director had a particular few words written on it. It had the lion's emblem. And then what I wrote on it was lead to serve and serve to lead. Since the day I became a director, I have to me, this has been a chicken and an egg story. I don't know what comes first. I personally believe we don't even need to find out what comes first because these are two particular issues that is service and leadership that are equally important that basically may go hand in hand in an organization like ours. To me, I genuinely believe that the purpose of life is to have a life of purpose. And if I translate it to my experience as a member of a Lions Club, as a lion, then even my membership of this organization must have a purpose. It is definitely a fact that uh, not everybody joins the organization to serve. There may be various reasons why individuals may be joining. Sometimes individuals join because some friends have asked them to join and they're not very sure about what the organization is all about. But the fact remains that if somebody stays in an organization and makes this a kind of a, a kind of a ethic in one's own life, then that happens only because that individual comes to realize and recognize the value of membership in this organization. When we wear this lion's label pin, and we wear it so close to our hearts, we basically declare to the entire world, there's a declaration that takes place. And the declaration is that we are responsible citizens of our own countries. I'm a citizen of India. You are citizens of say the United States of America. I'm a citizen of India because I was born here. Most of you, I would believe, are also citizens of your countries because you were born in that country. But then I qualified the statement that I had made. We are not only citizens of our respective countries. When we wear this label pin, the declaration is, and that's an unwritten, unspoken declaration, that we are responsible citizens of our own countries. Now, what is responsibility all about? That responsibility means that we take responsibility not only of our biological families, but we believe that our shoulders also need to carry the weight and the responsibility of the families beyond the biological ones, of people in our own communities, people in our own cities, towns, people in our own country, maybe at the global level. And this whole concept of service is so important to keep ourselves mentally, emotionally, and spiritually agile. Because service brings that vitality to the mind and the spirit. And if we live our lives only for ourselves, or perhaps even only for our own biological families, then instead of that vitality, we may be left with atrophy. Atrophy of the human mind, of the emotions, of the spirit. But when each one of us wishes and desires to realize the larger purpose of life, then service to the others definitely becomes a very important component of it. I use two terms. That is a member of a Lions Club and a Lion. Usually we equate one with the other. But I have not usually equated them. Because that doesn't apply to me. I became a member of a Lions Club in 1984. But if you ask me, when did you become a lion? I became a lion around 1993. Between 1984 and 1993, I paid my club dues. 
I went to about 50% of my club meetings. I went to district conventions. I went to a couple of multiple district conventions also. And I was simply a good member of a Lions club. But when I say I became a lion, that was a transformation. I don't have the time, but in short, I'll tell you that transformation happened because it happened, it, I had an opportunity to go and be a part of certain service programs that were being organized. And those, there was such humility in the individuals, the lions, the senior lions who were serving there and seeing them really provide that service. It was in, a, in an eye operation makeshift camp about a hundred kilometers away from where I live that I really got moved. And when I was driving back home, there were different thoughts that were running through my mind. Why do these people do this? I mean, look at the kind of time that they're given, look at the kind of resources that they bring, look at their dedication, look at their commitment. What is it that they're really getting out of it? And as I kept thinking more and more about it and gradually started talking to a few other lions who had joined this organization before me and in the couple of governors and past district governors, there was a transformation that took place that converted me from a simple member of a Lions Club to a lion. And that had happened through the whole process of learning the values of service. Service is the real deliverable in our organization, but leadership is important because leadership makes it possible. If it were not for the leadership that is provided through the members of this organization, the delivery would not take place. For the delivery to take place, for the delivery of service to take place, leadership plays a very important role. And what does leadership ensure? Leadership ensures, first of all, that we understand what our communities need. In our own terminology, it is referred to as the community assessment. Leadership helps us in capacity building, in being able to train our members so that they can work together, they can work seamlessly, they can work in groups that are diverse, that are cross-cultural, that groups maybe today that the groups working in different parts of the world because connectivity is at a totally different level because of technology today, leadership provides those opportunities. Leadership brings in that empowerment of the individual members and the entire teams so that we can really make an impact. It's not only about delivery, it's about also being able to make an impact because we are not serving alone. We are a team which is the number one team in the entire world. We are the number one service organization of the world. The noblest, perhaps this is the greatest gift to mankind on the planet Earth. And that gift is Lions Clubs International. Leadership makes that possible through setting up of structures because an organization as big and as large as ours cannot even work without those structures. And coming down to the club level, starting right from the international level, leadership helps us in coordinating our activities, in making studies, in making mid-course corrections, in making various kinds of analysis so that we can continue to move forward. Because it's important to realize that there is no point in having a Lions Club if there's no service taking place. I could very well understand the value of a Lions Club which has existed for 75, 80 years, and the members have become so old that they really do not want to disband the Lions Club. Maybe its membership is shrinking, so the, so the service activities of the club may be as good as you know, not, being, not taking place. Those kind of exceptions I can very well understand, and I, we should all be very grateful to the senior Lions who have continued to serve and have kept this torch alive for the past so many decades. But for the clubs that have come up in the more recent years, in the last one or two decades, maybe even three decades, 
I find no reasons for the clubs to be really holding on to the name of the Lions Club if the clubs are not serving. There is a lot of brand value to that word Lions. There is brand value to that label of a Lions Club. So if an organization, if a group of individuals who've come together are using that label of a Lions Club, we need to be paying that royalty for that using that brand value. There is no real payment of a royalty, except that it is expected that we will continue to serve through that Lions Club. Now, what are the challenges that the leadership faces as it has to continue to encourage and ensure that service continues to be performed? First of all, it's the challenge to ensure that our service is contemporary and that the organization is future ready at all times. There is a term that is used by Peter Drucker in one of his essays that he has written on working and on the management of the NPOs and the NGOs. He hasn't written much on NGOs. He's the father of management in the modern, uh, in the modern you know, business world, but he has a couple of essays. And one of the terms that he uses is intergenerational equity, which basically means that an organization, an organization like a Lions Club, like Lions Clubs International at the global level, whatever decisions we take, we must ensure that those decisions are correct when reviewed or when viewed from an intergenerational perspective. They must hold to be good for the immediate future, for the future, few years in the future. It's not about doing activities that you and I feel good about. It's about engaging in activities that the communities really need. And it's also about staying ready to be able to provide activities which the communities may need in the immediate future. That is the kind of expectation from an organization like ours today. The challenge for an organization or for the leadership today is to be able to change its delivery mechanisms. The times of COVID-19 are a perfect example. All through the years, we said that our service activities should be such that more and more lines should be able to attend. We encourage lines to come to every service activity. Rather, in every part of the world, whenever the leaders of the organization sat down, they discussed how can we improve attendance at service programs, at the service events that are taking place at the clubs, at the zone, at the region, at the district level. But when the timing, when the time of COVID-19 came, when this challenging period, in these uncertain times, lions have really answered Lions have really answered the clarion call of the communities by devising or innovating delivery mechanisms where the lions do not have to personally attend. And yet we can provide service that is needed by the communities. The challenges or the responsibility of the leadership for the service perspective is to be able to raise funds. And once here again, when Peter Drucker refers in that very essay, he refers to another terminology, which is building up donor constituencies. I find this extremely relevant to our organization. When we talk of fundraising, we sometimes think it's about, of, it's about raising funds for just one program in a particular year. So when the, we have a next team coming up the following year, the club or the zone or the region or the district would start anew about raising funds. The individuals who are involved would go out to the people that they know so that they can start raising funds. But in an organization like ours, where we need to institutionalize things, we need to build what is called donor constituency. I do not alter or I do not change the toothpaste that I've been using for decades. You don't change the razor or the blade that you use for shaving. I don't shave. But those of you who shave, you stay with that same razor. You stay with that same, the same company for the blade. You don't, women do not want to change the hairdresser they are going to. If I don't change my brand of the toothpaste, you don't change the brand of your shaving kit, 
The women do not want to change their own hairdresser. Why should a donor want to change the charity to which he or she is donating? We should be able to build that strong relationship with the donors. The story doesn't end with receiving a check. The story should start with receiving a check. And thereafter, there should be relationship building, bonding with those donors so that they keep coming back time and again. That is what the relationship between the leadership and the service programs is. And of course, the ultimate goal, in my opinion, is about building the so-called Amazon of service. That's the word. Amazon.com has taken the world by a storm. If you look at the model of Amazon, they do not have any stores. They do not have, uh, they do not buy and sell things on their own. Amazon is an aggregator. It's the biggest aggregator where those who wish to supply come together and offer what they wish to sell and supply. And those who wish to buy come on that platform and buy things from those who are offering them. Lions Clubs in International in the future should become the Amazon of service. Anybody who wishes to offer any kind of resources should be able to announce on the platform of Lions, this is what I have. And those in any part of the world, if they need those resources, should be able to contact them, get in touch with them, exchange views, have conversation, and so that the resources can then be diverted to the place where they really are best needed or rather most needed. The future for our organization, and that will be the future, or rather I should say that should be the future, is that we have to become the Amazon of service for tomorrow. My dear friends, even as we plan our service programs, we need to ensure that our service programs are not like band-aids. They have to be like therapies. Sometimes we approach a particular need in a community and we go and just apply a band-aid. The band-aids do not make an impact. The band-aids can give us the numbers if we are really chasing those numbers. But what the communities really need and what an organization like Lions Clubs International should be providing today are therapies. So when we take our programs, we should be providing those therapies. Leadership should ensure the quality of service. It's not only about providing service, but it's about providing service in a manner and of such things that we are ourselves ready to use them. In my own country, I often give the example that we often go and distribute food under the program of relieving the hunger. And when we try and do that, my question to my friends, and I trust me, I have always raised this question in my own district, multiple district and the other districts of India. And the question is, are you ready to eat that food at least for one meal? Are you ready to partake that meal at least for once? If you feel that meal is not safe for you to have even once, then we do not have the moral right to be serving that meal to others. The same applies to our hospitals. We run hospitals, clinics, we run various kinds of schools, we run various kinds of other programs and projects, whatever we run, if needed, can we take support of those programs in our own, for our own families, maybe for a very short period? That is the litmus test of quality. And that is the quality of service which the leadership must ensure that it is providing. When this, uh, there's something called getting into a congruence of leadership and service. And when this congruence of leadership and service is achieved, we shift to the next level. We shift to the level of what is called the servant leadership. That's where leadership and service become one and the same thing. Perhaps the real question is not, how can I help? The real question should be, how can I serve? Serving is different from helping. Helping is based on inequality. It is not a relationship between equals. When you help, you use your own strength to help those who really need it. And that's the difference. When I'm helping out, I'm trying to put someone else under a debt. 
that individual owes me back something. That individual owes me back, say, you know, anything for the future or anything at any point of time. There is, it's a relationship of inequalities as far as helping is concerned. But serving, like healing, is mutual. There is no debt. I am as served as the person I am serving. When I help, I have a feeling of satisfaction. When I serve, I have a feeling of gratitude. The connection I perceive between these two very different, but very similar actions is that neither leadership nor service can be achieved without the other. The two go hand in hand. There is a great correlation between them, almost like a couple. The survival of one is dependent upon the initiative, the attention, the effort, and perseverance of the other. Leadership and service are not two, but one. They are only effective when combined. The best leaders, my dear friends, are not trying specifically to lead. The best leaders are trying specifically to serve this world, to serve other people, to serve God, and importantly, to serve themselves. As a result of their service and hard work, they become great leaders. So leadership is not divorced from service. They're not two different things. They are basically two sides of the same coin. The coin is held by a member. It's the same member who's providing that leadership and the service. It's which side of the coin you're looking at and it really doesn't add anything to the value. The value of the coin remains the same. The value really is in that coin. The value really is in each member, in each one of us, in you and me, to be able to serve and to be able to be thankful to our God, to master, to anyone by any name that we may address for giving us this opportunity to serve. That is what is the gratitude of service. That is what I started with by saying the purpose of life is to have a life of purpose. That's where the purpose of life really gets accomplished. And that's how these two, in my opinion, are intertwined. Thank you very much for your time and returning it back to you, PID Nicolin. Well, thank you so much, PID Singh, for that stimulating presentation. You've said so many interesting and important things. I realize that I, I realize that I don't have any questions from the um, participants. I looked at the chat and in fact, maybe I did not say to them that they could write their questions on the chat, but you said so many interesting um, points. I wanted to ask if you could elaborate on um, where you said service brings vitality of mind and, and spirit. Vitality of mind and spirit. Could you elaborate on that? I, I, I think it's a fascinating idea. I mean, there are studies and most of the studies have really been taken up in the West. And there are studies by some of the top American universities, which is now a matter of record which show that individuals who are involved in service organizations and organizations like the Lions Club, of course, there are so many other options, those individuals do not get into depression the way most other people would. Their lives are more fulfilled. They, there is a greater purpose. Their minds are more positively occupied and there must be some reason for that. They do not get into depressions as much as the others do. This has been, proven there is empirical proof behind this in the studies if you google you will find from various universities it's there and that is what gives actually that gives us the strength if you look at the lions ourselves in our own clubs and in our own districts you will find certain lions who become very senior um, they still feel so much more energy when they go to and when they go to a service program when they come and speak to lions how does that happen they're giving they're giving their own resources because internally what they are getting is 
They're getting a recharge of their own batteries. And that's what really keeps, that's what I mean by vitality of the spirit, vitality of the soul, vitality of the emotions. That's extremely important. Thank you. You also spoke of the importance of capacity building when we bring new members in. You know, we would like to bring in a whole range of leaders, um, but we don't. And what is the best move for us when we have persons who think that they can't rise to the level of leadership? How do we help them to become leaders themselves? Uh, thank you, Pierre Nicolin, for this question. And, uh, you know, sometimes we think that leadership development is something away from service in our own organization. We talk of people, okay, you're interested in leadership development, you'll be a leadership development person. There's no question of being a leadership development person and if that person is not engaged in service. And even that capacity building when I'm talking of, when we talk about, uh, you know, let's take some examples uh, when you talk about uh, modules on team building, modules on working on diversity, modules on better communication, modules on even good public speaking, any of those modules that we are talking of, they essentially are going to help us in what we are doing in our clubs. Of course, they will also help in us, help us in our families, in our businesses, in being better individuals, in being a good father, in being a good brother, in being a good friend, in being a good mother, in being a good sister. It'll help us all through. But this capacity building must be for a purpose. I have really not, I really do not understand the purpose of saying that, you know, we've invested so much in our, when we, when I go to districts and they tell us our leadership programs are doing very well. So congratulations, your leadership programs are doing very well. We have good attendance, very successful leadership programs. But when I look, want to look at the scorecard of the service activities there and the scorecard of service activities, if it's not very strong, if it's not as robust as the scorecard of a, leadership programs and maybe not in one year but if it's not happening over two to three to five years then what's happening is we are just investing for something for which the organization or even our communities are not benefiting so capacity building is for a purpose of course the individual will benefit for one's business for one's family for an individual as a whole as an individual level as well but then the purpose is to be able to deliver service Thank you. Um, you talked about building donor constituencies and that the delivery of the check should be the start of that relationship. Any pointers for us on leading that development of relationships with our donors? I really do not know what's the ground reality in MD60, but I think, you know, most of our ground realities are <laughs> generic. So what happens is we get, we get money from a donor. We are thankful to the donor. We send the donor a receipt. Uh, if there's a tax deduction certificate, like in my country, we send the donor a tax deduction certificate, maybe a thank you letter and the story. In most cases, the story ends there. If we want to build donor constituencies, we need to regularly be in touch with the donor. We need to supply, continue, without asking for additional money, we need to supply, continue to supply that donor information how your dollar helped us, how many life it's impacted. Send them the reports, invite them to the programs. If the donor comes, honor them, recognize them at the door, at your service programs, at the service events. Never ask them for the money again because it's almost a given guarantee the money will come back again. It will, don't ask for it according to me, but show them, tell them what we are doing with the money let them enjoy, they are not part of the do good factor, but give them the satisfaction of the feel good factor by inviting them to the service programs, letting, giving them an opportunity to see, don't push them. Some of them may not come. So they will see pictures and maybe a few clippings, but continue with this relationship without asking for the money for at least six, seven, eight, ten 10 months. Then of course you could always ask again, by that time the individual would be would have registered as a donor in your constituency. Thank you so much. You know, you started off by saying that you didn't know the peculiarities of MD60, but then you continued and you gave us some surefire tips that we can use. Thank you so much. Our time is really passed, but there is a question and I thought that we could end with a little bit more about the difference between helping and serving. Yes, this is at a philosophical level. And uh, I, I mean, this is something that it's, it's about 
internally, there's a call internally. When I am sharing something with the other, am I, am I doing something, am I doing somebody a favor or am I doing my duty? Gandhi said that if you need four buttons and you've got five buttons, for the fifth button, you are a trustee of the society. Every individual is a trustee. For you, me, I mean, in, I can talk about myself. I feel for everything that God's given me, you know, placed me in the position that I am today. There is a certain trusteeship that we owe to this society. There is, I'm the winner. And I think every lion in MD60 is also the winner of this so-called ovarian lottery. I could have been born on the streets of one of the war torn states in the Middle East or one of the worst countries in Africa. I was born to parents who could give me the best of education and give me the best of times. And I had the opportunity to be a part of the Lions, travel with the world around the world and make friends. What did I do to be born in that family? I did nothing. I didn't choose, nobody chooses one's parents. Nobody chooses where that individual is born, to which parents they are born. The very fact that we've been born in families that have given us safety, security, education, a great start. We are all winners of that ovarian lottery. And being that this is a term that's not, that's not my term, ovarian lottery. This also comes from one of the great masters of management sciences. And having been the winners of that lottery, there's a tax to pay. You don't get lottery money without payment of taxes. And that tax to pay is to return the price for the, for, the, for, the, for the space that we occupy on this planet Earth. Nothing comes free, there's no free lunch. I occupy a certain space on this planet Earth and I must pay the rent for it. The rent for it is the discharge of my social obligation. And that is where, when I go out and do something, I should be happy for having had the opportunity to do something. It's not helping, I'm helping my own soul. I'm helping myself to be a better individual by doing so. So that's the difference in perspective. Once that difference in perspective comes, then leadership graduates to the next level of servant leadership. That is where leadership and, and, uh, and, leadership and service merges because as we study in mathematics, two parallel lines never meet. But in the philosophy of mathematics, the parallel lines meet at infinity. The philosophy of mathematics is not that the parallel lines do not meet. It's only in standard 10, 11, 12 that the parallel lines do not meet. The same happens here with the concepts of service and leadership. They merge. Thank you so much. You know, past international director, Lion E.P. Singh, you have given us so much this morning. You've given us a wonderful start to our D. You've given us philosophical, it's covered philosophical issues, but you have been tactical as well in your delivery. On behalf of Multiple District 60, and of course our council chair, Lion Denise, I thank you so much for this presentation. Lion Nicolin? Yes? Lion Nicolin, can you hear me? Yes? This is Lion, this is Lion Denise. I'm going to just say it very quickly. I know that uh, Lion, PD Singh was reaching out to me and I've been having difficult internet problems. I'm going to allow you to continue your thanks, but I just wanted to say personally how profoundly affected I was by his presentation. I thank him for making the time and I think that the messages and the clear signals that we got in this presentation were timely and very impactful for our multiple districts. So, Forgive me for being in and out, and forgive me, Madam Chair, for interrupting, but I just thought I would do this while I still had some internet. I really, really was delighted and very, very touched and uh, much food for thought in the words of our guest speaker. Thank you, Lion Nicolin, for facilitating my intervention and forgive me. Thank you. Oh, you are forgiven, Lion Council Chair. This is your... <laughs> Con your conference <laughs> and I know that you wanted to be sure that um, AP Singh heard you um, before you got disconnected. Um, no offense is taken, no apology is necessary. Um, PID Singh, 
just to conclude by saying how thankful we are that you made this presentation today, um, showing us that service and leadership are not separate issues, but that they are two sides of the same coin and they're not like which came first, the chicken or the egg. And finally, to remind us of the importance of what you've called intergenerational equity of our service delivery. The fact that while we are contemporary, we must also be future ready. Thank you so much and do enjoy your evening. Bye. Have a great day, everybody. Enjoy your convention. Thank you very much.